parks, schools, restaurants, and more, Assembly Road gets high scores. We're at Thriving City with so much to do. Uncle Boston Harbor in our view. Politics, cannabis, controversial stories, heroes, villains, who gets the glory? 50 plus languages in Somerville are spoken. Sanctuary City, there are no three tokens. History in Somerville stays alive. In all American cities, we won three times. Somerville connects. Somerville connects. Welcome to another edition of Dead Air Live, the longest live TV show in America, and Somerville Connects, our audio podcast. Today, we have the lovely Shannon Olson from Next Monitoring Alert System. Welcome, Shannon. Thank you, Jojo. I'm so excited to be here with you and to represent my company today. Yes, well, I met you on... Zoom, a Zoom call, a networking marketing call. Actually, I met your coworker, Kathy Givens, and she recommended to you, and I think that, no, not I think, I know that what you're offering the world is pretty huge. So I want you to take us on a little journey. We want to find out who is Shannon Olson and how did you arrive from where you were to where you are now? Take it away, Shannon. That is a great question. So we'll start with my, uh, my previous career because that is what brought me to Next Monitoring, but it's very, very different to, to what I do now. So for uh, 20 some odd years, I worked as an executive for a, a multitude of different financial institutions throughout Massachusetts. and. I found after 20 some odd years that although you can, you can make a great living in that environment, you don't have as much of an opportunity to truly help people. And I was at a place in my life where I was looking for more purpose. So that is what brought me over to Next Monitoring Alert System. Because when I saw Ray the alert guy's ad for the the manager of the the company it it just fit my needs very very well as far as giving me the opportunity to genuinely get out into the community work with people and help them every single day and it, it's just something that's been important to me and i'm very grateful to have the opportunity well, it sounds like you are a servant leader. That means that you lead, but you also serve. Is that correct? I would like to think that that is very accurate, yes. Okay, so tell us, what is Next Monitoring Alert System? I know it's a system, you alert people, but really get into the, the nuts and bolts of what it is and how you actually help people. Sure. Um, so I'm going to first explain to you what alert monitoring is, and then I'd like to talk a little bit about what makes us different, who we are in alert monitoring. Alert monitoring, the best way to explain alert monitoring is with a quote from the 80s that everyone remembers, I'll fall in and I can't get up. We all remember that hilarious woman who fell on the floor. She couldn't get up and there was the push button for help. That, that is what alert monitoring is in a nutshell. It is help at the push of a button. What makes us different than all of the other alert monitoring companies is that we believe in the next advantage. And the next advantage is basically treating all of our customers, our vendors, and our partners like family. And, and, and how and how do you do that? How do you treat everyone like family? I'm Italian. I have a big family, so I I So you'll I be get a great that. judge of what family service really is. So we do same day emergency service. We offer fully comprehensive in home installations that are completely contact free right now. Um, or people also have the option of having their equipment delivered. If you opt for the installation, you also get a full tutorial of how to use your system. 
most companies send you your system in the mail and you kind of got to figure out how to set it up, how it works. We, we don't put any of our elderly customers in that situation at all. We walk them through the process from the start to the finish. We, we put our office phone number on every single base unit so that if any customer ever has a question about their unit, they know exactly how to contact me. And that phone number goes direct to my office cell phone. So is, let's say you're servicing someone who's 90 years old and they don't have a computer, a Bluetooth. Should I assume that what you have runs wireless? Are there batteries involved? How do you service someone that doesn't have the newest technology? It's actually very, very easy. These systems are meant to work with out the need of outside technology. So for example, we offer anything from a simple landline system. So in which all the individual needs is a landline, home phone, and electricity within their home. As long as they have those two things, we have that system. We have another option for those who don't have a landline. So now all they need is electricity. And the last, um, option as far as those are concerned are for whether you want to be in home or if you want to go and take your system with you and that particular system again all you need is electricity okay so okay. let's let's take this a step further i'm 90 years old and i decide to take a road trip which will be very exciting when i'm 90 yes. and I know that I have your alert system. Do I need to charge it up prior? How does that work? So the way our mobile companion system works, once the battery is fully charged, that battery will last 36 hours. What I recommend people do with that particular system is when you go to bed, you put the charger right on your bed table. That way, if you have to get up in the middle of the night, it's very easy to access but it can charge while you're sleeping. And then you pick it up the next morning and it's good for another 36 hours. Now, if someone has a, um, a smartphone, you have an app as well? We, we have a lot of different uh, apps that work with cell phones. The one that I like the most is the Ever There application, which is for family members and caretakers. So let's say your mom was, was using our mobile companion system and you wanted to know, hmm, where's mom right now? You can log on to Ever the Ever There app right from your phone or your tablet and you'll see the exact GPS coordinates of where your mom is. Oh my God, that's okay. terrific. So if someone has Alzheimer and a family member knows that their parent wanders, you're able to track them as long as they have the device on them? Does it, does it go around their neck, on their wrists? How does it work? That, de that particular device you're talking about, the mobile companion, they can wear that around their neck or they can wear it on, on a belt clip on their waistband. That is not the, the product I would recommend for wanderers or Alzheimer's. We have and another product that is not a medical alert device, um, but it is meant specifically for wanderers. It's called the Pocket Finder Plus. And what that system offers is GPS tracking and geofencing. And what geofencing is, is you would select a perimeter, let's say around your home or you know within your neighborhood. And if mom or dad goes beyond that perimeter, you want to be alerted. That is like, that is crazy, insane, fabulous. Is this what sets you apart from everyone else? Are there other companies that do this? I, I, I don't know. This is the first that I'm even hearing about something like this. It, it is one of the things that, that sets us apart is we have a much broader range of options for people than a lot of the other companies, but Again, I really believe it is our service that separates us more than anything. 
is your product covered by insurance or is is it out of pocket that people have to pay it is private pay and can you give us i don't know if this is something you want to talk about is there like from this to this you can pay for services per month or is oh, it oh sure year? sure um we, our prices start as low as 19.95 a month and can go upwards in in the $50 range for in anything and everything in between you know that's very reasonable to have peace of mind uh next door to me i'll tell you a little story the woman's name was louise and as long as i've lived here in somerville louise was always next door and louise would have the same routine every single day she would open her shades blah 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 and one of the neighbors noticed that her shades were not up so the neighbor knew something was off she started to call louise's name while well, she rang her doorbell there was no answer and she knew that louise also left the house every day but louise didn't leave the house that day so the neighbor knew something was wrong yeah. to make a long story short louise fell and couldn't get up and she was laying on the bathroom floor for about 24 hours had the neighbor not noticed louise probably would have died louise had to go into some kind of nursing home or health care facility because she broke her hip and she she died shortly after that now had louise had your system tell us what would have happened she would have had help right away she the complications of waiting when, when you break a bone that that is what causes most complications it's not the initial fall it's the waiting period having it treated if she had had that treated right away it she certainly would have recovered so much faster she would not have been in pain on the floor for 24 hours she would have been in the hospital right away Okay. And her family, her family would know without her even needing to tell them because we take care of that. How does, um, how does someone, and I should know the answer to this, but I don't, I guess it works the same with ambulances. Someone alerts you, you have to get to their home and their door is shut tight, bolted. How do you get in? That is a very, very great question and unfortunately with emergency response personnel if they cannot access the the entrance without breaking down the door they have to break down your door because there was a call placed with an emergency and they need to access your home i will i will give you a, an excellent example my father was on a on vacation at, out west and the smoke alarm went off in his home in Massachusetts. The fire department couldn't get in. So they had to break into the home. He had a very expensive piece of art, fine art, that got broken during the, the entrance and he, he could not get the art replaced and he had he did not have a single leg to stand on because the smoke detector went off and that's what they need to do. They did their job. So what we offer to people is a lockbox and we only charge $55 to install the lockbox for them. They have it for life. You pick your own four digit code. It gets shared with emergency response personnel and then you never have to worry about your home being destroyed in the process of emergency response personnel coming in. Next morning, alert system thinks of everything. We do. We, this, it, it is our job to give peace of mind. This is unbelievable. So you offer a lockbox. So in an emergency, only the people who have the combination can get in 
so they don't have to knock the door down. In your dad's case, who stole the fine art or did it happen after? It wasn't stolen, it was broken. Oh, because they had to break down the door. Yes. What caused this, this particular piece of art was glass. It was blown glass art and it was dropped and you know in the process and it fell on the floor. You, know, you get a bunch of firemen breaking into a home. That's what's going to happen. If you don't mind me asking, what caused the smoke alarm to go off in your dad's home if he wasn't there? You know, that's a great question. I have absolutely no idea. I did not even think to ask him that when he shared the story. Oh, I would want to know. So you know, the home wasn't on fire. So I'm thinking it was probably a low battery in the, in the smoke detector. Oh, that Which happened? actually brings me to one other point, if I could throw this in. Um, an another great advantage to working with us, our technicians are also electricians. So when they go in your home, all you need to do is say, can you give me a complimentary safety checkup? And they will check your circuit boards or your, your fuse box, you know, whatever that it is that you have in your home. They'll check your smoke alarms, your smoke detectors, all those you know, little things while they're there. What other services do you have besides, which is a lot, you got the lockbox, so your service providers can get in in an emergency. You have the safety, security, uh, people can, your, your people can check all the different things around your house. Yep. The uh, fire alarms and that sort of thing. Not the fire alarms, the um, help. The smoke, the smoke detectors. detectors yeah. All your detectors. And you talked about if someone is hiking and they're in the middle of nowhere, and there is no cell phone service. They're hiking and they know they are in a pickle and they're not gonna get out. They're gonna freeze to death on the side of a mountain. How does that work? That, that's where the mobile companion comes in very, very handy because that works off AT&T's 4G and 5G towers. So you can be basically anywhere in the continental US and if you push that button, the GPS coordinates are going to find you within a 10 foot radius, which is a very small area. That's pretty amazing. Okay. Now this is going to be a, a good question. I know it's a good question. I go on a trip and I'm entering a very deadly zone where I could get kidnapped, murdered, but I want a next monitoring alert system companion, like you get travel insurance. Is there something like that that's accessible? I'm not exactly sure what it is you're okay. asking, but there is, there is an offer we do have for people who travel. So this might actually answer your question. We, we, don't, we don't have anything in place as far as a travel companion, unless you already have a mobile companion. We do have those. So let's say you are you want to go away on a trip and you want to make sure while you're gone, your mom or your dad has something at, at home to keep them safe. We, we do offer the any of our devices really for short term, for people in those situations. Yeah, that didn't, that didn't answer the question. Let me ask the question another way. And let me tell you my scenario. I'm a professional singer and I like to sing wherever I go. I was thinking about traveling and I'm not gonna mention the place to a place that if you get caught singing, you will get thrown in jail. And I went, are you kidding me? It's a place where People do not have rights. Anyway, I decide, because I'm curious, I am, not, maybe the word dying is not the right word, but I'm looking forward at some point in my life to visit this place. But I would want some kind of security. Is there something that I can get from your company 
on a short-term basis that I can press a button if I get into trouble? Well, that, that would be any one of our system. The, I, I just wanna make sure people understand when you press that button, it automatically alerts for, for help to come. So if you're, if you're driving around a neighborhood and, and you're nervous and you just want someone kind of there with you, it's not, that is not the device to serve that purpose. The way this device is, once you press the button, or if you have automatic fall detection and the sensors go off automatically, through the speaker, an emergency response dispatch operator is gonna ask you, are you okay, do you need help? So if, if you're traveling and you're in that type of a situation, you can absolutely use that button and say, yes, I do need help. You know, send my coordinates to the police but you, you have to be actively using it in order for the... Actually, you know what? I take that back. Because if you press the button and don't say anything, they have to send the entire cavalry. So help would come to your coordinate. And all what you would have to do is press the button. What if you're in another part of the world? Let's say I'm in Ireland and I'm stuck on a mountain. It only works in the continental US. Okay, so that changes. All right, it only works in the continental U.S. Okay, that's good to know. What if somebody does not have the mobility to speak back? Do you have to press a button to to respond back? Is it like a walkie-talkie and they don't have the mobility to press a button? How does that work? You, you don't. Once the operator comes across the speaker, that activates the device so that the user only needs to speak back to them. And let's say we're having a major catastrophic whatever in the world, in the United States, and a lot of people are pressing their buttons. <laughs> how, many, how many people do you have on standby to respond? There are hundreds of operators. We. So to talk about the, the operators, we only use five-star CSAA certified operators, which is the uh, Central Monitoring Association of America. And it's a very vigorous six-week program before you can even pick up a telephone with, with those folks. And they have centers throughout the country so that, because we're not the only company offering these, these systems, so that all people really can be accommodated. So you're plugged, if I'm correct, to local police and everything like that. Is that correct? When you push your button, it does not go to your local police station. It, it goes to one of the CSAA certified agents and then, and the reason why is not everyone pushes their button because they want emergency response personnel. Sometimes they just, let's say I pushed my button because I took a spill in my home and I can't get myself back up, but I'm not hurt to the extent where I wanna go to the hospital or want a police car and an ambulance showing up in my front yard. So I have the option of saying, no, don't, don't call emergency response personnel. Instead, please contact, and then I would give the number of one, two, three, or four. I have four personal contacts I can choose from that they already have all the information for in their system. And they can call any one of those people instead. Okay, this sounds like, I know I'm kind of like going off script a little bit, but I just want to know what are the options because I have no idea. So once you press the button, you have really five options. You have the option to for dispatch to reach emergency response personnel, or you have the option to call contact number one, two, three, or four. Now you, you've chosen your contacts based on your needs. Some people select their, their home health aid or their CNA as their primary contact, where others choose their next door neighbor. Other people choose their 
one of their adult children who lives closest by. And so what we do, in addition to the individual having the option of utilizing emergency response personnel or us contacting one of their contacts for them, in addition, if we do send emergency response personnel, we will start a phone tree with those four contacts. And we will continue down the list until we reach one to let them know about the emergency situation that can occur. In the event, in the event that you do not reach someone on the list, do you have option number five that you choose local police? Does that ever happen? Actually, option number five is to notify me. Really? Yes. Do you get notified sometimes when you're sleeping? I have never received a notification in in the middle of the in the middle of the night. No, it's very rare that you would go through all four contacts and not reach a family member. Okay, how different is it when you have your smartphone? There's something that's called SOS or emergency. How different is using that versus what you offer? The, I think one of the biggest differences is that your cell phone is not waterproof like all of our pendants are. You cannot take your cell phone in the shower and most falls do happen in that room. So that's, that's one thing. Another one is if you use the SOS button on your cell phone, you might have to tell that individual where you are and depending on how alert you are, you, you may not be able to do that. Also, that SOS button will not contact your family members for you. Okay, that, that's good to know because I'm saying to myself, why do we have the SOS in the phone? Uh, great, by the way, great answer. Great answer. What? Okay, so SOS on your phone versus next monitoring alert system. Yours is waterproof. Most accidents happen in the shower. You're not going to get someone that you have on your contact list. And what you didn't mention, the SOS people may have to break your door down. And that, that is true also. Yes. And, and break something like in your father's instant, a piece of rare art. And uh, wow, this sounds like a great product to have. What else does Next Monitoring Alert Systems provide, do? We, we have a lot of programs in place for our customers and our community. So one, one of the things that we do every single month, we do a drawing of every new customer we took that month, and we do a 100-100 wrap. We, we just randomly pick a name, and that lucky customer earns $100. And then they also get to select the nonprofit organization of their choice that they want us to make a $100 donation in their name. That we do every single month. And in addition to that, we prior to the, the pandemic where everyone had to hunker down, one of our favorite things to do was our ice cream social. And I would go to one to two different, either a veterans agent center or council on aging, a senior center. And we would give a fall prevention seminar and provide them with ice cream sundaes with the work. I cannot wait until we can do that again. Wow, this sounds like a great company to work for and you're staying thin, so you're not eating too much ice cream. I'm scooping it, I'm not eating it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the average age of the people that you service? Our customers pretty much range anywhere from 60 to 100. Wow, and how many people's lives have you made a difference and saved. Give us some of your stories. I, 
there's there's one story that really sticks out to me because this particular person wasn't elderly and most people when they think about alert monitoring they do think about older americans this person was a it was a veteran from the, the gulf war so he was fairly young man and he he had brain cancer and so he needed you know help and he actually went through remission and when he when he got himself all better he no longer needed the the button anymore and the praise that he gave us about the peace of mind he felt you know going through cancer and radiation and and all of that it's it's lonely it's tough he he appreciated that button and it, it almost brought me to tears when he returned it just hearing those those kinds of stories um in addition to that i can, I can tell you a story about a, a colleague of of mine who didn't think she would need a button until she fell down in her driveway and had to crawl all the way back into her house because guess what was in her house her cell phone these are great stories can someone get your system for let's say a few months at a they time can. they can. you can absolutely absolutely let me, let me tell you what happened to me i was walking out of my house with my sneakers on and i had a serious fall in the driveway on ice that was over an inch thick my brother had plow the driveway but because the snow was melting it created this whole big fat layer of ice and i fell i hit the back of my head and i blacked out and when i came to i didn't know if i was dead or alive of course i'm alive and i did have my phone on me and i called my brother and i said to him i had a really bad fall and uh, he said, um, do you want me to take you to the hospital? And I says, well, I'm supposed to drive somewhere. He says, you're not driving anywhere. Mm. Well, I go to the hospital and the nurse says to me, she says, I'm going to ask you a few questions. And the first question she asked me, this happened two years ago. Who is the president of the United States? And I said, John F. Kennedy. And she looked no. at me. And my brother looked at me and I knew I gave the wrong answer, but I didn't know who the president was because I had a really serious concussion, right? Then I said, Reagan, and I knew that wasn't the right answer because I could see by the look in their face. And then I was able to say Obama and I knew that wasn't the right answer. And I went, oh, I We're remember. We're getting closer every time. I said, I remember it was, it was Trump. And they both smiled. And I'm just going to tell you that when you have a concuss concussion, your brain is rattled. The reason why I ask if you can get it for a certain period of time, so many people fall on the ice. Yes. So this could be a good thing for people in the winter time. Yes, yes, absolutely. Do, do you have a lot of people that get your product for the winter months? You know, although we do off, we do allow people to go short term. Most people don't. They once they get it, they just keep it. I, I think when once you have that type of peace of mind. You don't want to give it up, not not for such a small um, amount of money because they're they're not expensive. Do does your product emit uh, EMFs, e electrical magnetic frequencies that could interfere? Sometimes no, not phones at all. do that. No, okay. Not at all, and they have been tested next to microwaves, refrigerators, different medical equipment to to make sure that there there is nothing, and it has passed with flying colors with every single test, each piece actually. And your different um, devices, people can either put something around their neck, 
have something on their hip? Is it something they can wear around their wrist? Uh, what are how are the different what are the different um, systems that you offer? The the three different ways that you can wear any of our alert monitoring devices would either be around your neck as, as a necklace attached with a, a belt clip, or we also have a wristband option that's very very popular. The one of our wristbands is actually the smallest pendant available on the market. You can't get any more discreet than that. And the the only thing that I would like to caution everyone with, with regard to the wristbands, are that the way that fall detection works, you need to wear it around your neck. Now, not everybody utilizes fall detection. So if you're going to press your button, you're fine with a wristband. But if you have automatic fall detection, which means if you fall, you want your system to know without you pressing the button, because let's say you hit your head and got a concussion, for example, um, then the fall detection, the way it works, there's an algorithm that's built around sensors. And when you fall, figure how, how a lanyard's gonna hang off your neck and sway. That's what tells the device that there's a fall. If you wore that around your wrist, it would not have that same effect. And I'd like to make sure that all people know that before they look into alert monitoring, because not all providers make that information clear, just because a lot of people like fall detection and they like the wristband. I'd rather be honest and let you know fall detection is not going to work right on your wristband because technology is not there yet but fall detection will work great if you wear it around your neck by the way this is huge what you're sharing right now i mean it is like so huge it picks up the algor algorithm by the way you move or fall yes, yes. wow this is this is huge do you set yourself apart? Next monitoring alert system sets, sets themselves apart from other companies because you do that or do other companies do this as well? I would say most companies offer fall detection today. However, the manufacturer we use, it has been proven to be the, uh, the highest standard of fall detection on the market. We have Beautiful. a new product that we are launching in September that I think is going to blow a lot of people away. Uh, we are coming out with an in-home system that you do not have to wear any pendants at all because the sensors are on the walls in your home. And it, we actually call it the elderly remote assistant because it, it does a lot more than just alert monitoring. It's also voice activated to connect you with your family and your caretakers. And if they want to speak with you, they can speak with you right through your device without going the, through the regular process of calling you and you having to pick up your phone. The sensors that go on your wall measure heat, measure motion, it, this is huge. Does this tie into people's um, security systems or is it isolated? You have a standalone. It is a standalone system. It does not tie into any security systems yet. That sounds great. I love the idea that you don't have to wear something and you just, you can call. Can you tell us how long Next Monitoring Alert Systems has been in business? Yes, we, we were established in 2008. So we've been in business for 12 years now. And the, the reason we started, the, the owner, Ray the Alert Guy, his actual name is Raymond Melanson. And he is a master electrician who has an, an electrical company. That's why all of our technicians are electricians. And he decided back in 2008 that he wanted to utilize his expertise and his knowledge to help the elderly within his community. His, his father worked very closely with the police force 
So he got to see a lot of situations where a button like this would have helped people throughout his life. So through that, he decided he was going to establish NEPS monitoring alert systems, and we have been very active in the elderly community ever, ever since then. Do you get a lot of thank you notes from families thanking your company for, can you give us, tell us a story? I, I'll give you an example of, of one note that made me chuckle because the, the note was from a, a doctor who had told me that he, he only got this system to shut his wife's mouth. <laughs> and that alone made me laugh. But then... What kind, what kind of doctor is this? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, but within two weeks of him getting his mobile companion GPS system, this doctor had a heart attack, fell down, the fall detector activated, and 911 was at his residence before his wife even knew anything happened. He was so grateful. So if, if I'm correct, he didn't even have to get in touch with the company. The company was alerted because of the algorithm of the fall? Yeah, his fall detector went off. And when that happens, they come across your speaker and say, are you okay? If you can't respond, we send help right away. This is and unbelievable. That's what we did. Wow, what a great story. Okay. A doctor who thought he didn't need it. Right. Well, I guess his wife had a few words that night to share uh -huh. with him. <laughs> okay, here's a hypothetical. Good thing you listen to me. Here's a hypothetical. A person is in a car accident. They get seriously banged up. They have their, their uh, necklace on. Next monitoring alert system necklace. Does that trigger the algorithm? Does does do you, does your sensor know there's been an accident from the Do they the have person? fall detection? Yes. If the individual has fall detection, the impact from a car accident would definitely trigger the the, the fall detector. Yes. Have you ever had anyone call you call your center from anything like that happening? None, none that I know of. No, I don't think okay. it's ever been used for a car accident. Okay, I I think I'm trying to explore every uh, every avenue here. Is there any final words that you'd like to share? I would just like to say thank you for for having me and for letting me talk about our company. I'd love for anyone who's interested at all to check out our website www.nextmonitoring.com. Check out our YouTube videos. We have videos displaying how safe our contact-free installations are. Or send me an email, shannon at nextmonitoring.com. I'd love to even just talk to you about what we have to offer. You heard it here, folks. And is there a phone number you want to share from the oh, company? Thank you. Yes. 508-379-6315. Or you can call our 1-800 number, which is 1-800-924-0975. Okay, so you're located in Swansea, Massachusetts in the United States. Yes. And you're also located in Rhode Island as well, which is on the East Coast. And you service the entire United States. Do you service Hawaii, Alaska, Puerto Rico? What we our devices will work anywhere within the continental U.S. However, our customer base is within Massachusetts, Rhode Island. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you can take your system with you anywhere you go. If you spend the, the winters in Florida, we have a lot of, of customers who are up here in the summer in Florida for, for the winter. Shannon, you have been such a delight and you really know your company. They're Thank very, you. very lucky to have you working. As you said, you're the heart of the company. You have a lot of heart. Not that other people don't have hearts, but you provide a lot of passion for your Thank company. You. And I could see that. Ray is very fortunate to have you. Ray, give her a raise. She <laughs> deserves it. 
<laughs> Shannon, thank you so much. I'll put the information that you gave us underneath you as well so people can find you. And folks, thank you so much for joining us for another edition of Dead Air Live and Somerville Connects. We'll see you the next time. Bye for now. Somerville Connects. Somerville Connects. Thank you.